want to share some things to you uh, about this list, this genie list. And there's a real important reason why we do this talk, you know, because we understand that golf is an opportunity for us to unlock our potential in life. Because uh, it teaches you so many things about yourself. And I was very lucky to meet this friend of mine named Chris Doris. And um, some things happened to me in my life in the last 10 years, which, which to me are nothing short of extraordinary. Um, and that's why we have this talk, and that's why I want to inspire you guys to start dreaming big and taking action. So. Uh, my friend Chris, he was writing this book called Creating Your Dream, Confidently Stepping Into Your Own Brilliance. And in the book, he created this, this genie list. I actually took it from a, a gentleman named Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins had the genie question, uh, and Chris was going to incorporate it in his stuff. And he wanted to try it out with me and just see how it, how it worked. So I said, okay. And he told me to get some legal paper. You know what legal, legal pad is? Big yellow pad, bunch of lines on it. And he had me create these categories, personal goals, professional goals, family goals, other. And he said, I want you to go into a room, I want you to sit down, and I want you to think in a way where you're not limiting your imagination. I want you to think uh, in a sense that's fantastic or rooted in fantasy. So I sat there and I filled each page top to bottom in each category. And I thought I was done. And uh, I came out. And I gave him the list, and I'm like, all right, what do you want to do tonight? See a movie or something? He's like, no, 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 we're not, we're not done with this whole thing yet. Now we have to get to the action step. So the action step, so he opened up my list, and he looked at a couple of things. And he said, oh, okay, look, it says right here that um, you want to be an airplane pilot. Well, the thing is, I didn't even know I wanted to be an airplane pilot until I wrote it down in those two hours in my living room. And I thought to myself, where did this whole thing come from? Well, when I was 14 years old, I flew in a friend's plane down to Hilton Head, South Carolina, to a PGA Tour event, the Sea Pines Heritage Classic. Davis Love, he won the event. It was his first PGA Tour win. And I remember kind of flying through the clouds, and it was like storming and raining, and this little plane was kind of twisting and turning. It was really scary, but I thought it was really cool. So I, in writing this down, I thought to myself, you know what? In that moment, when I was 14 years old, I thought to myself, this would be really cool, but you know what? I never did anything about it because I had some limitations. Not smart enough to fly planes, didn't have any money, didn't have any time, whatever it was, but I never did it. I just thought to myself, this is cool. And I suppressed this wish for 15 years, and now it just showed up out of nowhere. He goes, well, look at this. You want to fly airplanes. It's like, well, what are we going to do about this? And he goes, well, give me your phone. Let's find a local flight center, and let's make a call so that tomorrow you can start flying airplanes. And I'm like, whoa, 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 time out can't afford to do it. I don't have enough time to do it. It sounds pretty scary. You know, I just, I'm just doing this exercise. He goes, no, this is what we're doing. So I pick up the phone, call the local flight center, and guess what? Nine o'clock tomorrow morning, they have an appointment, and my name's in there. Darn it. He goes, what else is on here? Oh, you know what? You wanted to learn how to play guitar. Of course, I always knew that. My grandfather had a band used to go watch bands and clubs and you know, sit there and say to myself, I wish I could do that. Who here has said to themselves, I wish I could do something? Yeah, everybody. And you know what? My whole life, I never did anything about it. So he goes, grab the phone. Let's get on the, online. Let's look for a guitar instructor. And I did that. And guess what? Right after my flying lesson, I had myself a guitar lesson. Next day. And he goes, well, what else is on here? Come on, man. I mean, you're, you're killing me. He goes, what else is on here? Well, here's a couple of things. Um, I wanted to uh, write a book. And let me tell you something. I was not the best student in the world. Uh, certainly not, not in English. I didn't have any uh, formal training on how to write a book. Um, wasn't really that interested in, in different kinds of literature. But I wanted to write a book. Didn't know what kind of book it was, but I wanted to do that. Um, so he made me turn on my computer get the cursor going, and start just typing. Just, just type something. I start typing. He goes, OK, what else? I said, uh, you know what? You know, I'm a golf instructor. I like to be a nationally ranked coach. That'd be really cool. I think it'd be helpful for my career. Um, I'd also like to be on the cover of a national magazine. That'd be pretty cool, too. I think it would do a lot for you know, my standing in the industry. So I had to pick up the phone. I had to call a magazine and say, hey, this is who I am. And guess what? I'd like to be on the cover someday, so what is it going to take to be on the cover? Kind of a scary call to make, but I did it. 
So I did those. Uh, I also wanted to visit St. Andrews. Okay, you guys know what St. Andrews, right? Home of golf. Wanted to be more openly loving with my parents. Wanted to become a better public speaker. And there are some other things as well. So I created this list, which to me was based on really big things that were exciting to me. Now on the list, I also had other things that were really crazy. Like I wanted to own 25 houses in Maui. Who needs 25 houses in Maui? Nobody, right? So it was part of the exercise to think really, really big. But amidst all these things that are like totally nuts that really aren't important to me, I found some things that my heart was attached to and I didn't even know it. I didn't even know it. So as of uh, 2011, the first list was in 2003. As of 2011, these are the things that happened. So I started taking those guitar lessons. And six months after my first guitar lesson, I was singing and playing my acoustic guitar in front of an entire club of people uh, on the campus of Arizona State University. And when I got done playing, you know what my friend said to me? It wasn't as terrible as we thought it would be. Right? Not that bad. And that encouraged me to keep on doing it some more. And I started playing more and I started telling people you know, that I was playing guitar and I would meet people all the time. And some guy would say, well, I play drums or I play bass or I'm a singer. And all of a sudden, within a couple months, we had a whole band. We started playing shows around town. And like some of the greatest experiences in my life were actually playing music with people that loved it as much as I did. And the only reason it happened is because I went from wishing to doing, and it was a direct result of this list, and not being afraid to act, and not being afraid to pass by whatever limitations I had in my head. Write a book. I started typing. I didn't know what kind of book I wanted to write. But the book that you guys received at check-in is the book that came from my thoughts. And uh, yeah, your kid ate a divot, 18 Life Lessons from the Lynx. And the book was endorsed by Chicken Soup for the Soul. The foreword was written by Golf Digest Magazine. And it was also endorsed by uh, two-time Masters champion Ben Crenshaw. I had no training in writing a book. I just decided to start typing. And that's what it, what it became. Oh, St. Andrews, right? Well, guess what? I wanted to go to St. Andrews. And not only did I get a chance to go to St. Andrews, but I did a book signing on the 18th hole at St. Andrews during the Sunday final round of the 2010 British Open, signed a thousand books for the fans at St. Andrews. It all came from this, this list. I didn't even know I wanted to write a book. Never went to Scotland, never even talked about it, but it turns out I wanted to do it. National Magazine cover. This month, August 2012, I've got my fifth National Magazine cover this month. Right? Just because I wrote it down, thank you, Leo. I wrote it down, and I started asking people, what does it take to get on the cover of a national magazine? So I created it with my list and not being afraid to ask. The final one we'll talk about right here is the flying. So I went in, and uh, I had this meeting at this pilot school. You know, and it's really expensive to learn how to fly airplanes. Anyone here fly airplanes? Have any friends that fly airplanes? It's not, it's not a cheap hobby, right? And there's no way, there's no way that I could afford to do it. But I went in anyway. I didn't say to myself I couldn't afford it. I went in, and I talked to the guy, and I said, well, this sounds really exciting, but I can't afford to do that. You know what he said to me? He goes, oh, don't worry about it. I have a 12-year-old daughter that I'd like to have learn play golf, so... It's not going to cost you anything. You teach her how to play, and I'll teach you how to fly. Right? How about that? I moved towards what I wanted, and the universe conspired in my favor. And on my birthday, March 15th, I had my first solo flight, and I was ripping down the runway. And I pull back, and I leave the runway, and all of a sudden I'm flying by myself, and I fly this plane the whole way to Sedona, and I'm cruising over Pinnacle Peak in Arizona and all the great golf courses, and I'm thinking to myself, this is pretty cool, right? This is what we're talking about. This is doing something that I only wished about, I only dreamed about. I didn't even know I wanted to do it until I wrote it down. So the thing is, is that every single thing I wrote on my list, it happened. Every single thing. And it happened because I wasn't afraid to dream big. I had somebody push me so I couldn't come up with a million reasons as to why I can't do it. 
And once I started moving, the path presented itself, the universe conspired in my favor, and every single thing that I created in my mind became reality. So now, now that I know this secret, how do you think I think on a daily basis? Even bigger. Now that I know what I think is what I do, every day I wake up and I'm like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. It's going to be huge. We're going here. We're going there. And it just keeps happening over and over and over again. Right? And that's what I want you guys to experience as well, whether it be in golf or in life. So now's the time when you guys have to think big before the world gets in your way and starts trying to pull you down through conditioning. Starts trying to limit the way that you think. Because I know you guys can do it. And, and I love teaching junior golf um, because you guys are the ones that are, are the, the least conditioned at this point. And we've had some amazing success stories from kids that have been through this camp that have had the guts to create this list and pick up a phone and make a call and they've done amazing things. We had a girl at one of our camps in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin and um, this girl was the, the, the most shy in terms of personalities that you could ever come across. Didn't say anything the whole week. You know, I thought she hated the camp. I thought that she was going to have her parents call and say, you know, go ahead and take me home. Didn't say a thing. And we did this talk and I said, does anyone have anything really big they want to do? And all of a sudden she raised her hand in the back of the room and I thought she was asking to go to the bathroom because <laughs> she didn't, didn't say anything. And she raised her hand and she said, I want to be a sports anchor on ESPN. And people in the room, they laughed. Because they thought that how in the world can someone who's afraid to talk get in front of a camera and talk to the whole world? So I said, you know what? We're going to talk about this after our talk here. And I'm going to do everything I can to help that dream come true for you. And uh, we sat down, we talked about some things we could do. And I told her a couple of things. I said, number one, I said, your dream is entirely possible. Number two, you have to realize in life, uh, if you don't ask, you don't get. And guess what? When you're a kid is the perfect time to ask. Whatever you want, tell people right now, because right now, the rest of the world, they think you're cute. They don't think that you're any competition yet. So if you ask them for something, they're going to say, yeah, sure, whatever, kid. Have at it. Be happy to do it for you. The other thing I told her is that people in life, they don't like to say no because it makes them feel uncomfortable. So even if they don't want to do something for you, they're going to do it anyway because they'd rather be comfortable than actually do what they want. And you need to use that to your advantage as well. So what she did is she started making phone calls. And she started making movement, and all of a sudden she was working for her school paper. And then she was uh, the lead editor on her school paper. And then she was in her community. She was interviewing NFL head coaches, NBA players, NFL players. She was getting all these marquee interviews that the local papers and the local television couldn't get because these athletes thought they were way up here. They didn't want to talk to Channel 6. They didn't want to talk to Channel 10, but they talked to her. She called up and said, this is who I am. I want to interview you for my school paper. And all of a sudden, celebrities were showing up at her home. You know, and now she's pumped. She's inspired. She sent me a letter just a few weeks ago talking about camp and how camp changed her life. So there's no way I can let you guys come through here and just teach you how to putt or chip or pitch. I want to show you guys what you're capable of. And that's why we have a section in our workbook which is dedicated to dream building. So will you promise me you guys will write some dreams down and make them huge. And then will you promise me, once you write them down, that you will not wait. You will pick up the phone, you will call your mother or your father or someone in your community, a coach or a teacher, and say, this is what I want, will you help me? Can you guys do that? If you have the guts to do that, I guarantee you will open up a series of experiences that will take you on a journey that you'll remember for the rest of your lives. It's happened to me, it's happened to people in this camp, it happens every day. You know, but you are the creator of everything that you do. And if you're the creator, then why not make it amazing? Sound good? Okay. So guys, thank you so much for your attention. Hopefully now you understand that what you think is what you do tomorrow. We're going to use those paper clips to try and become more aware of our thoughts. Um, and hopefully you guys are having a good camp so far.
All right, thanks guys.